Hello, you are most welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Real Impartation Moment on Tuesday Night Anatomy with Daniel Okwan. Today's section, we we'll quickly go through the histological organization of the lower respiratory tract. Yes, of course, you know that the respiratory tract, yes, will have an upper respiratory tract where it starts all the way, yes, from the nostrils getting into the nasal cavity, okay, getting into, of course, the pharynx, and then getting into the larynx, yeah, that portion of the larynx above the vocal fuse. And of course, that portion of the larynx below the vocal fuse is the commencement of the lower respiratory tract, yes, getting to the trachea, getting to the, I mean, the trachea dividing into the, I mean, the main bronchi, yes, further dividing into the secondary and of course tertiary or segmental bronchi eventually terminating in what we call the i mean bronchioles having the initial bronchioles all the way to the terminal bronchiole yes respiratory bronchiole yes getting to what we call alveoli via you know this kind of alveolar duct that portion is the lower respiratory tract so we'll be looking at that today but one thing that you know generally about this respiratory system is that yes we know that the inhaled air will contain particulate matter and that is why the beginning portion of this respiratory system is well i mean supplied okay or is having this kind of arsenal to ensure that yes i mean these particulate matter including dust bacteria and what have you yes they are removed from this i mean this kind of inhaled air so that as we progressively get to the lower portion of the respiratory system the air yes is relatively well conditioned Yes, what do I mean by well conditioned? Apart from removing this particulate matter, we want to moisten the air, or in other words, we want to humidify this air. We want to actually make the air a bit warm, yes, so that it gets closer to the core body temperature. Yes, I mean, that is key. So that, yes, the air that will eventually get to the alveoli of the lungs, yes, is well conditioned. Yes, we, all, we know other functions that this, I mean, upper respiratory tract portion of it, even portion of it being the lower respiratory tract, being the larynx, for instance, will do. Yes, helping in phonation. Yes, another thing that this respiratory system is going to do, yes, if you look at the upper portion of the nasal cavity, yes, I mean, that mucous, uh, mucous membrane where is covering the superior nasal concha by way of the superior terminates. Yes, what we find is that we have what we call olfactory mucosa. And this olfactory mucosa, yes, is relevant in helping in what you call perception of smell but what am i trying to say what we find is that as air enters the nasal cavity via the two anterior nasal apertures or external nerves or what we call the nostrils okay into the nasal cavity what is happening is that i mean the vestibule of this nasal cavity you find hair you have this coarse hair in there and those coarse hair you know they are the vibrissi and this vibrissi is important in helping filtering some of these, I mean, particulate matter, okay, out. Then eventually you get into the nasal cavity proper, where of course we have the olfactory portion, which is the upper portion. But I'm talking about the respiratory portion. This respiratory portion, instead of rather having this coarse vibrissi, is rather having cilia. Okay, so it means that it tells you something, that the air has been a bit, I mean, the particulate matter, I mean, in it, okay, initially, in the vestibule, the vibrissi have taken care of some of them. So it means that we don't need coarse hair again, but rather we need this kind of short cilia, which are very mobile, okay, and then through the mucociliary action, yes, we can help move this kind of particulate matter out. Then eventually we get into, I mean, what you call the pharynx, okay, which of course, you know, we have the, I mean, nasopharynx, oropharynx, you know, we have the laryngopharynx, which is continuous with the esophagus, okay. But what I'm interested today is that I want to look at the lower respiratory tract. And as we move on progressively, the robust nature of the epithelial lining, okay, in ensuring that you are able to condition the air, you know, if you talk about the vestibule, you know, it's going to have stratified squamous, keratinized epithelium because it's having breezy, these coarse hair. Okay, but as you move, move along, yes, you have pseudostratified columna, okay, ciliated epithelium with goblet cells, okay, then you go to simple columna, you go to short columna, you know, simple cuboidal, eventually getting to the simple squamous. So as you move down, the robust nature of this epithelial lining, okay, and the apparatus, okay, these kind of glands, ceromycos glands will also be diminishing. These kind of cartilages, yes, they will all be diminishing, you will be replaced eventually with, I mean, this kind of smooth muscle, you will see the trend. And so, without much ado, let's set the ball rolling. 
Now, you know that generally, if you talk about tubular organs, so I'm going to look at the trachea, we are going to look at the bronchi, look at the bronchioles, and we look at the alveoli. Okay, now one thing that you find is that generally tubular organs, and for that matter, the trachea, the bronchi, the bronchioles, you know, what the, I mean, alveoli, you know, these ones, what is going to happen is that they will have three core generally. Okay, and from the lumen going to outside, you have what you call the mucosa. Then you have muscularis, and then you have what you call adventitia or serosa. Now, I've already told you that if you are having serosa, then in addition to connective tissue, okay, serosa is, I mean, simple squamous epithelium surrounding what you call the connective tissue. So, if I have connective tissue, loose connective tissue, and there's a single squamous, I mean, single layer, simple squamous epithelium, okay, covering it, then it becomes what you call serosa. Serosa is ensuring that you secrete some kind of fluid, okay, making the organ actually mobile. So intraperitoneal organs will have serosa, and you know extraperitoneal organs, including these trachea bronchi, they will have rather, I mean, what we call adventitia, because we want to connect. I mean, this connective tissue is going to glue them to neighboring structures. Okay, so that is one thing that I have to know. But in case of what we call the, I mean, respiratory tract, okay, what is happening is that there's this kind of discontinuity. We don't have this kind of three core system. Some may be three, some may be four, some may even be five. So that is what I want to actually take you through. Now, one thing I want to show you over here is that now if I take the cross section of this, okay, through the, I mean, the tracheal wall, just to show you, you have this epithelial lining. This epithelial lining, yes. Now, I'll take you through the various cells of the respiratory system, okay, in our next video. Now, what we are looking at is that these cells, okay, is showing us what you call pseudostratified, okay, columnar epithelium. This is the artistic view, so you may not see it very well, but it is showing you pseudostratified, you know, columnar epithelium. It's bearing cilia, okay, cilia on its superior aspect. And what you find is that these, I mean, pseudostratified columnar, it's actually a simple type of epithelium because all these cells make contact with what we call the basement membrane because beneath every epithelium, it is necessary that, yes, under it, we are going to have connective tissue. And separating that connective tissue is loose connective tissue areola, which in this case we call lamina propria, okay, is what we call uh, basement membrane. So there's a basement membrane and non cellular layer where you're separating the epithelial lining from this, I mean, uh, what we call the lamina propria. And one thing that we find, yes, is that these, uh, I mean, ciliated cells over there, they are non secret, they don't make any secretion. But, I mean, interspersed within them are these, I mean, pale staining structures over here, okay, goblet cells. These are the goblet cells. These are the secreted cells which are going to make mucus, okay, so that it can trap the particulate matter in there. And through this, I mean, cilia, in that's something we call the mucociliary escalator, helping to move this particulate matter out, okay. It gets into the truth, yes, eventually you want to expectorate it or you want to swallow it. And once you swallow it, yes, the ACL in the stomach will, I mean, take care of. What we call the swallowed substance so that is what i mean i'm talking about now beneath the epithelium is what we call loose connective tissue lamina propria loose connective lamina propria, just beneath it okay and one thing is that these two things okay these two things what i mean is that uh, if i take the epithelial lining plus the underlying loose connective tissue together will form what we call the mucous membrane that's the mucosa that's the first i mean tunic or the first coat that we find Okay, just like any ordinary, I mean, tubular organ which will have mucosa it made up of epithelial lining, and of course, the underlying lamina proper of loose connective tissue is the same thing we are seeing here. Okay, so that one, no problem. But even beneath, now what we find, I'll show you in another picture to demonstrate something to you. This is loose connective tissue, it's highly cellular. It means that the fibers over there are fewer. You have more fibroblasts than even fibrocytes because, you know, it's after fibroblasts you know, have made enough fibers and then they get entrapped in its own extracellular material. That's when you form fibrocytes. So it means that if they've not lost their energy, they've not used their protein synthesis apparatus to make a lot of collagenic fibers, then it means you are going to have more fibroblasts in there than fibrocytes. And making the, I mean, the, what we call the connective tissue highly cellular, having fewer fibers. But of course, more ground substance, that pale staining areas, okay, white is areas over there. Now beneath this, in the case of the trachea and the bronchi, please get to know this, in the case of the trachea and bronchi, instead of going straight to have what you call smooth muscle, we don't have it, but rather we have what we call submucosa. And submucosa is what we call the, 
is immediately beneath what we call the lamina propria of the mucosa. So that is the submucosa. And that is the area that we are going to find what we call the glands. Okay, so the glands, some of them are deeply staining. I mean, those ones, I mean, if you look, visit the video that I've done on glands, yes, you know that these are the serous cells, serous isina. And of course, these pale staining regions, these are the mucous isina. Yes, we know that sometimes you may have I mean, a situation where, of course, you have a gland having both the mucus and of course the serous one and through this staining process what is happening is that there's that mucus swelling ensuring that you push what we call the serous isina i mean components to what we call the periphery and that forms what we call the serous demi-node so that is why we are calling i mean the type of gland that we find in what we call the i mean trachea and for that matter bronchi serous mucus glands we all have both serous and mucus glands over there so that is, I mean, one thing, okay? So it means that beneath mucosa and for that matter, beneath lamina propria, I'm going to have submucosa, okay? That is what we see. Now, this will be slightly different. I will explain it in the case of the bronchi. What is happening is that the mucosa is separated, or for that matter, the lamina propria is separated from the submucosa via what you call smooth muscle layer. I'll show you that one, okay? But in the case of trachea, there's no distinction, okay? They are fused together. Only that you look at the cellularity, okay, of what we call, I mean, the connective tissue alongside the fibers to judge. So this one, you have more cells, okay, in the lamina propria loose connective tissue than in the case of what we call the submucosa. Because in the submucosa, yes, it is less cellular. In fact, most of the fibroblasts, okay, make use, I mean, I mean, use their protein synthesis machinery to ensure that they make a lot of fibers. Okay, and the fibers run in different directions, making it dense, irregular connective tissue. So in the submucosa, instead of having loose connective tissue, we are having dense, irregular connective tissue. And because we've made use of the fibroblasts, the protein synthesis machinery, they become exhausted. Most of them will be converted to become fibrocytes instead of fibroblasts. Okay, so that is what, I mean, we find over there. I mean, these are the excretory ducts of these, I mean, glands, these excretory units. Now, one thing that we also find is that we will see that in the trachea, okay, and for that matter, in what we call the bronchi, what we see is that, I mean, we have what we call hyaline cartilage. There will be hyaline cartilage over there, and I'll show you the histology of hyaline cartilage. So, there will be hyaline cartilage coats as well. Now, in the case of what we call the trachea, we know the hyaline cartilage is not, I mean, it's deficient at the posterior aspect, because at the posterior aspect, we are going to have what we call the, I mean, the esophagus okay and then beyond that we are also going to have i mean it's going to be pieces in the case of the bronchi okay we will see that one and then beyond okay beyond this uh what we call cartilage layer yes every organ these organs are tubular organs the outermost tunic is supposed to be adventitia it's supposed to be adventitia because it requires that it is fixed it is stable so that we connect it to what we call neighboring or adjacent structures so that is what we have to know and remember that the adventitia is also going to be made of dense sorry going to be made of loose connective tissue loose connective tissue now one thing i want to show you is that because this is hyaline cartilage you know cartilages are avascular if something is avascular there is yes i mean everything for it to be living yes it needs blood supply and for that matter cartilage yes this hyaline cartilage for it to receive blood supply okay just like elastic cartilages they are endowed okay along either sides by what we call perichondrum and perichondrum you know it is dense you know i mean irregular connective tissue having an inner chondrogenic layer and outer fibrous layer you know in, in in adults you know that outer fibrous layer yes it gets i mean that's the only persistent one because you have exhausted the inner chondrogenic layer or the inner cellular layer yes it makes sense i've told you that in the lamina propria in the connective tissue wherever you are going to find what you call blood vessels because these blood vessels that through diffusion across the i mean the basement membrane i mean some nourishment will get to what we call the epithelial line the i mean non-vascular epithelial line okay so let's move on and see what we have yes so as i was talking about if i take i want to give you the general picture if i take this i mean these organs you are going to look at the epithelial line okay for trachea okay if i take trachea if i take primary bronchi secondary bronchi okay what is happening is that the epithelial line is going to be what we call pseudo stratified okay ciliated columnar epithelium so the cells over there they are having cilia okay so pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium 
and interspersed within them are what you call the secretory goblet cells. Okay, that unicellular gland over there, secretory goblet cells. Okay, now in the case of tertiary bron bronchus, what is happening is that, yes, the cells, I mean, the tallness of these or the height of these cells continue to become shorter as we move along the length. Because at the end of the day, yes, we want the complexity to go down. Because at the end, we want it to be getting shorter and shorter. So, you know, the principle is that these things, they don't occur abruptly. So, they occur gradually, okay, in the body. It doesn't just take place abruptly that, yes, from simple uh, pseudostratified ciliated columnar telium is going straight to simple squamous or simple cuboidal. It will be, yes, initial simple columnar. Then it becomes low columnar. It becomes simple cuboidal. Yes, then eventually get to simple squamous. That is what we need. Because at the end, we want the thickness of the epithelial lining to be smaller to ensure that, I mean, when we get to the respiratory portion, exchange, I mean, of these gases can really take place effectively. Okay, so that is what we are saying. And we said that beneath it is what we call that loose connective tissue lamina propria, areola. Okay, that is beneath this epithelial lining, for it's non-cellular. We need this because we have blood vessels over here, so that through diffusion, Okay, sitting on this or uh, separating these two things via what we call the basement membrane, this non-cellular layer, yes, that nourishment can get to what we call the epithelial lining. Okay, it's highly cellular. So I told you that beneath this, okay, now in the case of trachea, beneath this lamina propria, so this together, okay, epithelial lining plus lamina propria, okay, will form what we call, I mean, mucosa. And beneath, therefore, beneath this mucosa, I have this layer, and that is what we call the submucosa. The submucosa, classically, yes, is made up of dense irregular. You can see the fibers, a lot of fibers, fewer ground substance, and fewer cells. Okay, these cells, majority of them are fibrocytes, not fibroblasts, because they've been used, okay, to make these fibers. They've made, adjusted the protein synthesis machinery, okay, to make these fibers. They become entrapped in there. Okay, so that is what we find. And I told you that that is where the glands will be. The glands will not be in the lamina propria, okay? And therefore, we don't have these kind of mucosa glands. But rather, we have what we call submucosal glands in the case of the trachea, okay? Just like in the case of what we call the bronchi. So, there we are. I mean, this is the tail lining. If I take a I mean, transverse section of it, what I'm going to see is that, but it's not showing me the entire luminal outline. What I find is that I have this epithelial lining, although we can't see it very clearly. But what is happening is that this is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial cells with goblet cells. So goblet cells are also in there. And then beneath it, yes, we have what we call lamina propria of loose connective tissue, just beneath it. Okay. But of course, we know they are separated by the basement membrane, basement membrane separating them. Okay. And then, I mean, what is happening is that these two things are forming what we call the mucosa and beneath mucosa where I find glands, where I see these secretory units together with their ducts, okay, then I know I'm in the submucosa because it's only in the submucosa that I'll find us, okay, so this is the submucosa. Now beyond submucosa, I have this collagenous layer. I have this collagenous layer. This is actually hyaline cartilage. And it makes sense because hyaline cartilage, because it's avascular, you can see on either side, I'm having this dense irregular connective tissue to give it that nourishment through diffusion. And that is what we call the perichondrum. Okay, that is the perichondrum. And then one thing that we find is that we said that this cartilage is a C-shaped. Yes, if you look at the entire, you know, length of the track here, you have about 15 to 20 of these C-shaped, you know, rings of cartilages. These are rings of cartilages. But one thing that you have to know is that because it's a C, it means it's not complete. It's not complete at what we call the posterior aspect because the posterior aspect we have the oesophagus and we've said that oesophagus is always collapsed okay it's only when food is going through it during swallowing that it becomes you know patent okay that's when the food ensures that yeah there's that kind of expansion and to ensure that there's smooth expansion without you know obstructing the flow of food okay I mean, the bolus of food through the esophagus. Yes, that is why God, in His own wisdom, ensured that, yes, I mean, C shaped cartilages, yes, you should be deficient at the posterior aspect, okay, to ensure that kind of free expansion of what we call the wall of the esophagus. Okay, so that is, I mean, one thing that you have to know. Now, therefore, yes, it makes sense that this, I mean, this layer will have to be completed. And it's completed by this smooth muscle bridging the ends of the two, I mean, tracheal ring. I mean, these, I mean, C-shaped tracheal rings, ring, I mean, I'll show you. And that is what we call the trachealis muscle. So it means that, yes, I'm having mucosa, one, I mean, tunic. I'm having submucosa, the second tunic. 
the tear tunic is actual cartilage bridged by the smooth muscle and this was because it's on the trachea we call it trachealis muscle so i mean this i mean tunic can be called yes it's made up of hyaline cartilage and smooth muscle okay so musculo cartilaginous layer yes is i mean we can refer to it as such then beyond that okay then you know that the outermost tunic is supposed to be you know adventitia because of course we know that this adventitia who is the outermost tunic beyond the cartilage and you know, the smooth muscle i mean i mean tunic okay so that it glues it to neighboring or adjacent you know structures okay so that's what you have to know and you know that this adventitia is made of loose connective tissue have a lot of you know fibroblasts alongside you know these kind of elastic you know fibers okay so that is i mean one thing that you have to know yes so if i take a longitudinal section yeah this is what i'm going to see i will have this i mean in the track here i'm going to have four tunics and these four tunics yes i'm having the mucosa and the mucosa is made up of what we call the epithelial lining being pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium okay so it's having cilia alongside you have goblet cells in there and that is what we call the respiratory epithelium and then beneath it yes it is necessary that we have lamina propria of loose connective tissue areola to give it that nourishment okay via or across this basement membrane through diffusion okay so there's the lamina propria loose connective tissue there are no glands but below the lamina propria i have what you call the submucosa i have the submucosa and characteristically yes although there's no i mean sharp boundary between them what is happening is that the lamina propria is made of loose connective tissue highly cellular okay that's one it's having fewer fibers okay no glands but in the submucosa yes i'm going to see glands i'm having if you take a closer look at it if it's high magnification you may, you will see a lot high you know level of what you call fibers but fewer cells but of course i'm talking about glands you are going to see glands serum mucous glands some of them are pale staining some of them are deeply stained yes serum mucous glands okay so this is the first tunic mucosa and then we have the submucosa and then beyond submucosa i will have what we call the muscle layer and that muscle layer is what we call um sorry is i mean the collagenous layer and this collagenous layer is actually having cartilage okay having these i mean uh i mean chondrocytes showing this kind of isogenous groups i'll show you and then of course you know that uh, we will have this kind of um, homogeneous or relatively less feature less uh, uh less i mean uh, featured you know ground substance because at the end of the day the five the predominant fibers that collagenous fibers that we find in this kind of cartilage is actually the type 2 collagen where it's having you know the same yes almost the same refractive index as the ground substance so it means that it makes it glassy okay that is that one and they are lying in that kind of lacuni okay so that's that and i said that these I mean, Halin cartilage will be bridged, okay, at the ends via what you call the trachealis muscle, that is smooth muscle. That's another good. And then the last one should be the tunica adventitia. So let me just explain this kind of, I mean, cartilage to you, Halin cartilage. Why is it Halin cartilage? It is Halin cartilage in the sense that, yes, these things over here, these are the chondrocytes. But I can see several chondrocytes, okay? So this one I can see three, I can see two, I can see, I mean, more than two. Yes, so these are what you call, it's what you call, they form what you call isogenous groups or something you call cell nests. Yes, they were originally chondrogenic cells. I mean, they became, they differentiated to become what you call chondroblasts. And then these chondroblasts, yes, made the extracellular matrix by way of fibers and the ground substance. They get entrapped within it and portion of it where they get entrapped is what we call the lacuna. Okay, they are housed. That's where they are going to be housed. So once they get entrapped, they are now called chondrocytes. And these chondrocytes are showing this kind of, I mean, I mean classic, you know, isogenous groups or cell nests. Okay, now what you find is that that region, okay, that matrix and cell matrix immediately surround this, I mean, chondrocyte is highly basophilic. Okay, and that's what we call the, I mean, territorial matrix territorial matrix. in the territory of the chondrocytes so territorial matrix and of course in between them in between these isogenous groups we have less basophilic areas and that's what we call the inter-territorial matrix now i told you that the type of collagen where is predominant over here is the type 2 collagen okay and this type 2 collagen yes it's having the same refractive index 
as that of the ground substance and that's why i mean this i mean region tends to be glassy tends to be led i mean featureless eventually okay and you know this kind of cartilage is the model for bone formation this is the fetal cartilage actually so i mean let's move on now i told you that i mean we are going to have smooth muscle bridging okay the ends of these i mean cartilages the smooth muscle so it's smooth muscle why is it smooth muscle if i take a magnified image for you then what is happening is that yes you have this i mean spindle shaped okay fibers which are i mean uninucleated okay they are i mean involuntary i mean you find it in viscera and including this kind of track here and other ones they are viscera and therefore yes it makes sense that that's why this smooth muscle is so called visceral you know muscle okay so that is that one it doesn't show intercalated that you know those ones it doesn't show branching yes i mean and all those why it doesn't show striations cross striations are not present okay so the, that's what they call the smooth muscle now so that is what we call the trachea that the trachea is going to have i mean four tunics namely the tunica i mean uh, what you call the mucosa you're going to have the submucosa they are not differentiated only that we have glands in the submucosa and the connective tissue that is dense irregular unlike in this case of the laminar proper of the mucosa being what we call loose connective tissue areola okay now what we find is that in the case of i mean then we also have what you call the cartilage that's hyaline cartilage which is bridged at the ends via what you call the trachealis muscle the smooth muscle and then beyond that automatically there's going to be adventitia because extra peritoneal okay now in the case of the bronchus okay we have a similar term so the tail line of the bronchus yes it's going to be so if i take a cross section of it i'm going to have what you call i mean pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells yes i mean the principal host with goblet cells non i mean these secretory cells which are found between these non secretory i mean ciliated cells and then beyond that we have loose connective tissue areola Forming what we call the lamina proper, just below that, okay, just below that we have the lamina proper of loose connective tissue. There are no glands, okay, and then beyond that, okay, I'm supposed to find submucosa, and submucosa will have glands. But finding itself between the submucosa, this time around differentiating the submucosa from the mucosa is this structure over here, which we call the smooth muscle. Now, please keep an eye on this smooth muscle. This smooth muscle is less thick okay compared to another one i'll show you in the case of the bronchial terminal bronchial actually yes you can see this smooth muscle it's not that thick separating what we call the mucosa from what we call the submucosa so that is what we see you have glands these glands some of them are mucosa, some of them are serous so serous mucosa glands are present okay they will open it into onto the surface epithelium ensuring that these glands they help to modify i mean humidify or moisten the inhaled air now beyond that, beyond what we call submucosa, we have cartilage, just like we have in the case of what we call the, I mean, uh, trachea. But these cartilages are discontinuous. Can you see that this one, there's one here. Uh, yes, there's another one here. It's not a complete C-shaped cartilage. But one thing we find is that it goes all around it. Okay, that is what we call, I mean, the cartilage layer. So the cartilage layer is also there. So, so far I've seen mucosa, I've seen the smooth muscle layer okay so that's number two then i have seen submucosa number three then the fourth one is what we call the hyaline cartilage layer so the cartilage layer is code number four and beyond that beyond that yes automatically i'm supposed to have adventitia to glue it to neighboring structures to give it some support give it that stability mm, connecting to neighboring structures okay so that is what we find so what's the distinction between the i mean the bronchi and what we call the trachea what we've seen is that yes there's i mean that thin line between them there's that separation between the lamina proper of the mucosa and the submucosa by way of having a smooth muscle layer between them okay that is one yes the cartilage is not completely one c which is i mean deficient under the posterior aspect now so the, the point is that why is it that in the case of trachea we have the c-shaped rings of cartilage you're supposed to ensure that yes the trachea yes is patent or is open all the time because we ensure that we want food to sorry we want air to be going in and out of the i mean lungs all the time the trachea being the windpipe is supposed to ensure that i mean continuous air movement in, in and out of the lungs okay and that's why the support is reinforced by these c-shaped rings of cartilages 
okay that is one thing especially so that at low air pressure yes so air can go in and out of the lungs now in the case of what we call the i mean bronch uh, what we call bronchi these cartilages we've now called them plates of hyaline cartilage they are not from this kind of ring so we have plates around plates of hyaline cartilage okay these plates of hyaline cartilage still hyaline cartilage the same historical feature that i explained to you and so it means that it will have perichondrum on either side there will be perichondrum so that through diffusion this cartilage which is avascular will receive you know nourishment okay so that is i mean one thing that you have to know now remember that we are going to have the tail line it being what pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells okay Yes, I'm going to see this until, you know, the bronchus, I'm going to have the primary bronchus or the principal bronchus or otherwise known as the, I mean, I mean, what do you call the main bronchus? Okay, you still have this architecture. Yes, I'll have what you call secondary bronchus. Secondary bronchus also have this architecture. Okay, but tertiary bronchus, the tail line will be different. Now, the tail line will continue to become shorter. So it's now going to be simple columnar epithelium. We don't have pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. Yes, it will still bear cilia. Okay, so in the case of tertiary bronchus, we are going to find pseudo stratified, sorry, simple columnar epithelium with cilia, ciliated. Okay, so that is what, I mean, we find. Yes, all these ones will have goblet cells. Okay, when I get to what we call the, I mean, the bronchioles, these goblet cells will be replaced via by what we call, something we call clara cells. I'll take my time and go through these kind of cells with you. We'll take a closer look at them in a later section. Okay, now, so that is what uh, we see. But one thing I want to show you is that histologically, then want to distinguish between two kinds of bronchi, whether you are intrapulmonary bronchus or you are extra pulmonary bronchus. Now, if you are intrapulmonary bronchus, you'll be seeing some lung tissue by way of this alveoli. Yes, this spongy like appearance will be seen over there. So once I see this, okay, once I see, I mean, this non wavy, I mean, luminal margin, once I see this, I mean, Mucosa having a tail line pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells and lamina proper of loose connective tissue and submucosa separated by what you call this smooth muscle layer. Okay, I have these plates of hyaline cartilage. I have adventitia. Then I know, then I also have this kind of lung tissue. I know I'm looking at intrapulmonary, you know, bronchus. Okay, but if it is extra pulmonary outside the lungs, then I'm not going to see this kind of alveoli. This kind of lung tissue will not be seen. So that's the distinction you should know. So there we are. I mean, this one is a real time section showing you the bronchus cross section of the bronchus. And so you can see, I mean, the tail line will be there, including the lumen. Okay, pseudo stratified, although you can see pseudo stratified later columnar epithelium with goblet cells beneath it. Yes, we are going to have what we call the, I mean, lamina proper of loose connective tissue. Both of them contributing to the formation of mucosa. Below mucosa, I'm supposed to have submucosa, but separating the mucosa or the lamina proper from the submucosa is that smooth muscle and beyond the smooth muscle i'm going to have this kind of sorry beyond the submucosa i'm going to have this i mean plates okay yeah this continuous although they go all around it okay but they are pieces of this kind of hyaline cartilage plates of hyaline cartilage and then beyond that yes i'm going to have this uh, what you call adventitia and you can see the lung tissue this is intrapulmonary bronchus intrapulmonary bronchus so beyond bronchus, yes, I'm going to what you call bronchial. And bronchial, one thing is that bronchioles, the first thing is that they don't have cartilage. So in it, we are not going to see any cartilage in the wall. Okay? We don't have any cartilage. And because it doesn't have cartilage, it's smooth muscle. I told you to keep an eye on the smooth muscle of what you call the bronchus. Okay? This one is very thick. Okay, bron uh, bronchioles because it's not having cartilage. Okay, God ensure that yes, if you don't have cartilage, let's give you more of the smooth muscle. You know, the other one has more cartilage. Yes, yeah, smooth muscle is there, but it is less. Okay, that's in the case of the bronchus. But this one is not having, I mean, cartilage, and therefore it's, re I mean, it's having more, I mean, it's endowed with more smooth muscle. And this smooth muscle is not there for joke, so that to help in that kind of contraction. And that is why the luminal margin. In the case of bronchial, and for that matter, terminal bronchial, you see that it is still a shape, or it is this kind of having this kind of wavy appearance. Okay, so that is one thing that you have to know. Histologic are very important, and the epithelial lining over here, just beneath the lumen, the epithelial lining. 
okay just away from the lumen the epithelial lining over there this time around it is low columnar epithelium low columnar type of epithelium or something you can also call a simple cuboidal but you are preferred to call low columnar because we are having simple columnar in the case of you know the tertiary bronchus now in the case of bronchioles we are going to have low columnar type of epithelium then beneath it there will be lamina propria yes as we said by principle together forming mucosa okay so that's the mucosa and then beyond mucosa now this one we expected that we should see sub mucosa there's no sub mucosa here okay there's no sub mucosa here and that is why this one is devoid of glands because the glands these cerebral glands will be seen in what we call the i mean the sub mucosa and so we have the smooth muscle which is there the smooth muscle is there very thick smooth muscle and of course necessary beyond smooth muscle layer we are supposed to have what we call the because there's no cartilage okay over there then we have what we call the adventitia we have the adventitia it is not surprising that we are going to find bronchial surrounded by this lung tissue being the alveoli yes because of course yes it's within the lungs it's within the lungs yes we have this kind of branches of the pulmonary artery yes all around here okay to give it that kind of i mean blast supply eventually so one thing over here is that instead of having i mean in the lamp, I mean, if they are lying, instead of having, I mean, goblet cells in these non secretory, I mean, low columnar epithelial cells, we are having rather clara cells. I will take you through that one. We are having rather clara cells. Okay, so that is that one. So there we are, as you can see, over here, we are having this kind of thick, smooth muscle. The luminar margin is wavy or is still a shape, as you can see over here, this very thick, smooth muscle. Okay. That is, I mean, that thing that you see, okay? It's their lining, lamina propria over there, smooth muscle, and, you know, adventitia. So it means that in the case of, I mean, unlike in the case of the bronchi, where we are going to find, find I mean, five, I mean, tunics, okay? If I should take you back briefly, we are going to find five tunics, okay? And those five tunics are what? I mean, the mucosa made of epithelium and lamina propria, the smooth muscle layer number two we are having the submucosa number three we are having the cartilage number four and then we having what we call the i mean the adventitia number five in the case okay let me take you there in the case of what we call the bronchial okay terminal bronchial for that matter we are going to have three tunics so this time we have now come back to the normal thing that general tubular organs will have three tunics okay being the mucosa the muscularis that is smooth muscle and the adventitia okay so that is that one all right so that's the real time section showing you what i was talking about now the next one we want to look at is to distinguish you know this kind of i mean terminal bronchi bronchial from what we call respiratory bronchial now in case of respiratory bronchial no doubt we are going to have simple cuboidal epithelium okay from low columnar to simple cuboidal epithelium okay we are going to find that one here now what we find is that now as you can see the wall is not complete in the case of what we call the respiratory bronchial the wall is not complete so we have some regions between adjacent walls okay and that is what we call alveolar out pocket uh, these alveolar out pockets what they are going to do is that through this alveolar out pocket you know the air is coming all the way so air can escape okay this way and then they will get into what we call the alveolar via what you call alveolar ducts okay so that is why these things is not discontinuous it's not continuous okay the wall is not continuous in the case of respiratory bronchioles okay remember that the luminal margin is not wavy and the reason is that the wall is not continuous and the, for that matter the smooth muscle over there although it is thick okay it is not that kind of continuous okay so it can't really contract to call the luminal margin to appear wavy okay so that is what i mean we find Yes, if you have the epithelial lining, automatically you have laminar proper, very small layer of laminar proper sitting under it, then smooth muscle with small adventitia also being there. Okay, and then you can see the lung tissue is all around it because once you move over here, we are getting into what we call the alveolar ducts, and of course, for that matter, taking you into the alveoli. Okay, over there. This one, it does not have sub mucosa, just like I mean, terminal bronchial, and for that matter, it will also have glands. Yes, it's also not having cartilage. Eventually, we said that this cartilage has been replaced with this kind of, I mean, smooth muscle over there. So there we are. I mean, as you can see, this is the terminal bronchial. It will have alveolar out pockets, okay, so that air can escape, 
okay into the alveola i mean uh, duct okay then from the duct into the alveoli okay good now remember there's difference between alveolar sac and alveoli if i take just one of them there's alveolus and then if i have a lot of these ones it will give me alveolar sac okay alveolar sac and alveolar sac will be receiving that kind of i mean air from a single duct you know alveoli alveoli is going to have we have about 300 million alveoli healthy lung okay for each lung okay now what we find is that this time around you see it's just like the blood vessels you have arteries arteries is having you know large size arteries very thick wall medium size less thick small size less thick eventually i get into i mean uh, 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 what do you call it arterioles and then the wall thickness is going down down when you get to what we call capillaries we don't have that trade tunic system okay so similarly in the case of alveolar the wall of alveolar is not going to have because at the end we want it to be turned so that exchange of gases can actually take place and that is why this one will have the tear lining okay over there sitting on the basal lamina okay so that is that one and of course we know that i mean there will be that kind of blood vessels all around to form this kind of respiratory barrier or respiratory membrane or respiratory surface that blood air interface ensuring that there's exchange of gases but over here we have two cell types that we find in the wall of the alveolus and that is what we call the alveolar type 1 cells or the pneumocyte type 1 and those ones are the flat cells the squamous cells that we find over there squamous cells then i mean we also have that one will at least be about 90 percent in there you know we say 90 to 95 percent and then we also have a small portion of these i mean cuboidal cells okay over here and these are the pneumocyte type 2 cells or the alveolar type 2 cells which otherwise we call them great alveolar cells okay that one yes be about just yes, about three percent yes will be present okay so that is that one that you have to know but the one way is forming parts okay contributing to this blood air barrier okay is what we call the type 1 pneumocyte then separated by their basal lamina and then the blood vessel the endothelium of those blood vessels will separate them okay so good now another thing which is not really yes this one i'll say that it's outside it's coming from the blood because it's actually a macrophage of what we call the lung and that's what we call the dust cells dust cells are also there yes to ensure that there's that kind of i mean phagocytosis in case there's any escape of uh, i mean particulate matter in there okay so i mean that is that one that you have to actually know of course, you know, I just sent any two alveolus, two alveolaries to the entire alveolar scepter, okay, being between them. So that is what we are saying. Yes, we have the, for instance, there's the tertiary bronchus, okay, then we have the terminal bronchus, we divide rapidly, I mean, eventually to give us the terminal bronchus, bronchial, having the wavy, the luminal margin is not showing it clearly. Then you have what you call the respiratory bronchus having a lot of you know alveolar out pockets leading into alveolar duct and then eventually supplying these kind of spongy areas where is the alveoli okay so in summary what have you seen if i take the epithelial lining of the trachea it is pseudo stratified silated columnar epithelium if i get to primary and secondary bronchus bronchi it's going to be pseudo stratified silated i mean sorry pseudo stratified columnar epithelium in the case of bronchus, it's becoming shorter. It goes to what we call simple columnar. When I go to, I mean, uh, bronchioles, and for that matter, tertiary bronchial, it's actually going to be low columnar. There's low columnar epithelium. Yes, yeah, a simple columnar. You can see that if I get to the respiratory bronchioles, I'm going to have what we call the simple cuboidal type of epithelium. Okay, that is what I will see. In the case of alveoli, what I'm going to see is that I will see what we call, I mean, simple squamous epithelium. Now, in terms of goblet cells, yes, we have more in trachea, but as I move down, goblet cells will be going down and down. Then it's absent in the case of respiratory bronchial, and for that matter, alveoli as well, you know, including alveolar that. Now, talking about clara cells, clara cells are the counterparts of, uh, they can be used to replace the goblet cells. And that is why, yes, clara cells will rather be in what you call bronchioles. Okay, in the bronchial, you have clara cells. But because we are having goblet cells in what we call the, I mean, the, uh, what we call the trachea, bronchi, what is happening is that we don't have clara cells over there. Now, having, I mean, a discrete, you know, smooth muscle layer, okay, 
yes we said that the smooth the discrete one is not discrete because it's joining the ends in the case of trachea the trachealis muscle is joining the ends of what we call that i mean the hyaline cali so it's not discrete then as i move on if i go to the bronchus yes where i'm going to have very thick smooth muscle is the bronchial the terminal bronchial okay although yes respiratory bronchial will also be thick but i mean that is why this one is very continuous very thick and that is why it's able to contract making the luminal margin wavy in terms of glands and for that matter serum mucous glands we are having more in the trachea as i move down it goes down then at the level of the bronchioles yes we don't have glands okay because after all they don't have submucosa and then if i get to cartilage yes i have this prominent c-shaped cartilage in trachea i'll have plates okay eventually in the terminal bro, yes you are going to have the plates very small pieces of them there and then if i get to the bronchial i don't have you know the cartilage because i'm going to replace it with thick layer of smooth muscle okay so that is i mean what uh, you have to know all right i'm very grateful for your time this evening i hope you find the video helpful all right so have a good night and may the good lord richly bless you amen